Okay, today we're talking about chapter 2, section 4, the applications of linear equations. Uh, let's see, I think we can, let's go ahead and put all this on the first page. Alrighty, so in uh, section 1.7 we discussed translating English phrases into algebraic expressions. Right. Now we will use those skills to read numbers, to, I'm sorry, to read number problems and translate the sentences and phrases in the problem into a related equation. The solution of this equation will be the solution to the problem. So, an example of this, example one, solving number problems. So, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I shouldn't have uh, snipped the whole thing, but uh, we're here. So if a number is decreased by 36 and the result is 76 less than twice the number, what is the number? Yeah, let's go ahead and, let's, let's actually go ahead and not snip the solution there. So let's let's go back and do this. Okay. Only because I, I really want to show the, the thought process of, of how I get to what I get to, right? Um, so if a number is decreased by 36 and the result is 76 less than twice the number, what is the number? So what we need to do is figure out, um, well, first of all, the variable, right? Now we could use, use n, and I can't remember if the textbook used n or x, but if we want to use n, and we will this time, um, we will use n to be our unknown, okay? All right, so this sentence reads, if a number is decreased by 36, and the result, okay, so we, we, we can stop right there. If a number is decreased by 36, so we can say a sum number is decreased by 36, okay? And the result, which is gonna be equal to, and the result is 76 less than twice the number. So it's gonna be 76 less than twice the number. And kinda don't like the way this end over here looks. And that's it. At the, now we just have to solve, right? So we have n minus 36 against it. That's some number that's decreased by 36, and the result is 76 less than twice the number. So let's solve this. All right. Uh, we're going to do two things simultaneously here. We're going to simultaneously uh, subtract n from both sides. So subtract n here, and then subtract n here. We end up with simply an n. And then we're going to add 76 here and we're going to add 76 here, which is 40. Okay. And the reason we did it simultaneously, well, it just makes it easier, right? Um, but I'm, I'm trying to solve for n, and so I need to isolate. I need to isolate everything. So, right. And so the n is equal to simply a 40. That wasn't so bad. And honestly, I don't think any of these really are. It just, um, you, you, you just can't go fast, right? Can't go fast and try to try to figure things these things out. So, and and honestly, to me, it's just kind of fun trying trying to put puzzles together. But that's also because I <laughs> I like this stuff. Uh, so let's begin. Example two: three times the sum of a number. And five is equal to okay. So let's just let's leave that. At, let's leave. Let's look at just that sentence. Three times the sum of a number and five. Okay, we're stopping at is because that's going to tell me what the left side is, right? So three times the sum of a number and five. So three times the sum of some number and five. It's written like this. And it says is equal, so that's good. So is equal to what? Is equal to twice the number plus five. So it's gonna be twice some number plus five. And well, heck, I think that's it. So, so again, we just have to let's just let's just figure this out. And before we do figure this out, let's go ahead and distribute here because we're gonna have to isolate the n in order to f to solve for it. So we have a three n plus fifteen. That's equal to 2n plus 5. So let's go do a whole simultaneous thing again. So we're going to subtract 2n from both sides. And again, I am, let's go back and look at this. So I, instead of 
<clears throat> the reason why I subtracted only an n on both sides here is because I, I want my n to be positive, right? Um, I mean, that if I'm solving for n, I want it to be positive. Well, I know, I did just do some just, just very super duper quick mental math, and, and you, you, you can, and you probably already do this too, but I know that if I subtract 1n from 2n, I'll get a positive n. However, if I subtracted 2n from 1n, I would get a negative n, and I don't want to do that. And it's the same thought process here. I have a 3n and a 2n, and I want to have a positive n, so I'm going to subtract 2n from both sides. Okay, now, at the same time, I know that you might autopilot around and subtract 3n from both sides. And even if you do that, and actually, I'll go ahead and do it that way as well. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do it that way also. Put it on this side. Just to kind of show that, I mean, it's it's not necessarily a big deal. Um, I autopilot all the time, and I also make mistakes all the time. But I try to correct my mistakes, right? So anyway, so we're going to subtract two in from both sides here, and we end up with an n. And then we're also going to subtract 15 because I'm trying to isolate the n, and then subtract 15, right? And then I get a negative 10. So it's equal to a negative 10. Okay. Uh, or, you know, we'll just put, we can combine these. N is equal to a negative 10. All right. And I said I'd do it on the other side as well. So let's let's do it the opposite way here. Okay. So now we're going to subtract three in from both sides. You know, again, we're we're autopiloting. We don't really we don't really care. We're 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 completely over this class. We're over college. We just want to we just want to have money and not do anything, right? Um, and then we subtract five from both sides, and we end up with a uh, positive ten. That's equal to a negative n. Okay. Well, we end up with a negative n is equal to a positive 10, so we multiply both sides by negative 1. So we end up with um, negative 10 is equal to n, which again is the exact same. So it doesn't matter if you if you if you autopilot, um, you'll you'll still get there. And when I say autopilot, I don't know. I I just I say that a lot because I I, I know and I have been and I am. That, that student that uh, that just uh, you know I just I go off of just just kind of instinct at some point and, and just kind of hope that things work out uh, but anyways the applications of linear equations so word problems hmm let's see yeah I mean this just kind of gives us gives us a, a basic step-by-step -step guide but again I'm I don't like to necessarily read the step-by-step -step guide because I think that's just one extra thing that you feel like you have to memorize. Uh, whereas instead, it's just easier for me to explain my thought process. And again, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? So let's make this a tad bigger. We have we have fractions in here, and I I can hardly see them. Right? So Joe wants to budget two fifth <clears throat> two fifths of his monthly income for rent. He found an apartment he likes for eight hundred dollars a month. What monthly income does he need to be able to afford his apartment? Okay, so he, um, Joe wants to budget two-fifths of his monthly income for rent. He found an apartment for $800. So what monthly income does he need to afford his apartment? So we're, if we're going to let, we're going to let, uh, let's, let's just let X be Joe's monthly income. Okay, so, so we're just going to have some variable X be Joe's monthly income. And he wants to budget two-fifths of his monthly income for rent. So we're going to say two fifths x, okay? And he found an apartment for eight hundred dollars. For eight hundred dollars, what monthly income does he need to be able to afford the apartment? Well, th this is it. So, so we need to figure out what his budget is. All right, what what is um, what is Joe's monthly income to to be able to sustain this sort of rent? Okay, so all we have to do here is just solve for x, right? So we multiply both sides by 5, so we end up with, oh, let's do it this way. So we multiply both sides by 5, 5 times this, so that cancels, times 5 here. So we end up with a 2x is equal to a 4,000, and then divide both sides by 2, all right? And so we end up with x is equal to... 2000. So Joe needs to have 
a monthly income of two thousand dollars to afford a uh, an eight hundred dollar a month apartment if he plans to allot two fifths of his income to that apartment. Okay, so this one seems to this one hits home. I think these calculators are one of the biggest scams perpetuated on the students, but here we are. I mean, $150 calculator is ridiculous. Right. But anyways, so a student bought a calculator and a textbook for a total of $200. I don't know what world that is, what he's in, but I mean, a calculator alone is $150, right? And then the book by itself probably is $150, so that's $300, but, you know, we'll move on. Uh, the textbook costs $20.50 more than the calculator. He then challenged a friend to calculate the cost of each item. All right, so we know that. Uh, let's so if he bought a calculator and textbook for two hundred and eighty two hundred dollars and eighty cents, the textbook cost twenty dollars and fifty cents more than the calculator. Okay, so we don't know how much the calculator costs. We don't really know how much the textbook costs either. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're, we're gonna let x be equal to the calculator. And then um, if X is the calculator, then that means we're going to have the calculator plus the textbook. And the textbook was um, calculator plus $20.50. Okay. And the total cost was $200.80. So uh, we need to find out how much each of them cost. Well, this is our equation, so let's just to solve this equation right so we we can take we can take down the parentheses and then we combine like terms we end up with a 2x plus twenty dollars and fifty cents and that's equal to two hundred dollars and eighty cents okay we're going to subtract uh 2050 from both sides so if we subtract 2050 from both sides end up with a 2x is equal to what 180 30 so 180 30, and then we divide both sides by 2, so we end up with an x is equal to a 90, $90.15. $90 .15. Okay, so the calculator, again, x is the calculator, the calculator costs $90.15. Okay, well, if the calculator costs $90.15, then how much was the textbook cost? Well, that would be, that would be 200 dollars and eighty cents minus ninety dollars and fifteen cents okay and that is going to be equal to one ten sixty five okay so the calculator costs ninety dollars fifteen and fifteen cents and the textbook costs one hundred ten dollars and sixty five cents and that's how we do that All right, so distance, rate, and time. Let's, uh, so there's going to be a lot of distance, rate, and time problems that you're going to come across in this course and in the next course, the next course, the next course. And a lot of it has kind of has to do with you need to be able to spot the distance, rate, and time problems. And of course, you're going to know a distance, rate, and time problem because, well, because the way it is, right? So uh, what we're going to do here, uh, starting off right at the top, it says problems involving distance usually make use of the relationship indicated by the formula D is equal to RT, where distance is equal to D, rate is equal to R, and time is equal to T. A charter table showing the known and unknown values is quite helpful in illustrating the next example. So, um, okay, so, so a chart would be helpful. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with it, and I guess I'll snip it just, just, uh, just to kind of um, go in the direction that the that the textbook editors pretty much uh, seems like want to go into. But I will also do it another way here. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> This reads, a brother and sister leave a family reunion at the same time and drive their cars in opposite directions. Don't we just love these problems? <laughs> their brother's speed is 50 miles per hour and the sister's speed is 65 miles per hour. 
when will they be 460 miles apart? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out their uh, the distance rate and time. Okay, so we need to figure out how to set up this equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that um, distance equals rate times time. So we're going to do distance equals rate times time. So D is equal to R times T. Okay. So we have the uh, the the distance. I'm sorry. The the rate uh, of both of them, right? Uh, so if we were to say D uh, is equal to, uh, you know what? Let's actually let's not rewrite it. Let's just go ahead and, you know, let's just go ahead and make a chart. And so let's actually put let's actually put the the distance on the right side, right? So rate times time is equal to distance. Okay, again, that's just that's the same formula we looked at. It's just I changed it around. I put the d on the right side. And of course, we know that it's not a big deal if it's on the right side, right? So uh, the rate of the brother. Okay, we'll put the brother in uh, in blue. The rate of the brother is 50 miles per hour okay what is the what is the time well we don't know the time right so it's just gonna be simply a t right and then well what is 50 times t well that's just gonna be 50 t pretty easy and then the sister so she's traveling at a rate of 65 miles per hour right we again we don't know the t and so this is just simply 65 t okay so we have 50 t and 65t. This, this is our distances. Okay, so we need to figure out what their total distance is. I'm sorry, we need to figure out uh, how, how to set up an equation involving their total distance. Okay, well we were told that their total distance is 460 miles apart. So if the brother's distance in blue right there, the brother's distance is 50t, right, and the sister's distance plus uh, plus the sister's distance is 65t, and again, the, I'm just looking right here, their distance, 65t, and we're going to equate it to 460 miles Okay. All we have to do here now is solve for t, right? So 50 plus 65, well that's 115, and 115 will go into 400, 115 uh, four times. So we end up with t, well, let's, just, let's actually write that out. So 115t is equal to 460, which means that t is equal to 4. Okay. So they're traveling apart at their, at their speeds. Um, they will be 460 miles apart in 4 hours. Uh, oh yeah, so I was gonna put the chart on there, didn't I? Um, I mean, I kind of made the chart. Okay, so more, more distance and rate. All right, so applications involving, I'm um, sorry, applications solving distance rate time problems. So a motorist averaged 45 miles per hour for the first part of a trip and 54 miles per hour for the last part of the trip. If the total trip of 33 miles took six hours, what was the time uh, for each part of the trip? Okay, so this is, um, let's see, I think we're going to use the, the same kind of chart that we used on the previous page. And yeah, there's something wrong with that. So uh, similar to the first part, the first part I, uh, on this chart, let's actually put an under, underline here. Okay. So uh, on this particular page, I did uh, the brother in blue and the sister in red. I'm going to follow that same kind of pattern. Okay. So we're going to do rate times time is equal to distance. I'm going to follow that same kind of pattern and I'm going to let uh, the first part of the trip be blue and then the second part of the trip be red. Okay, so the first part of the trip, uh, he went he went 45 miles per hour. Okay, so we're going to do you know essentially the same thing here. So 
the rate was 45 miles per hour. <clears throat> okay, the time we don't know the time. Time is t, so that means it's 45 t. Okay, well the second part he traveled at 54 miles per hour, so the rate was 54. The time was in t, so we have 54 t. So again, kind of the same procedure here. <clears throat> well. Mm, not necessarily. Okay, so yeah, sorry about that. So I say not necessarily because, well, we, we it says that the total trip, the total trip uh, took six hours, right? So if the total trip took six hours, let's think about this a lot logically here. So if, if it took T amount of hours for the first part of the trip, okay? Well, what would the, the second part of the trip take? How long would the second part of the trip be? Well, it would be t uh, 6 minus t. Okay, so again, let's think about this and, and, and why it makes sense. Well, for the rest, let's plug in numbers here. So, right, so at the first part of the trip took 2 hours, all right, and that's t. Well, I plug in t here. Well, 6 minus 2 is 4, all right? And then we have a 4 for this, and the 4 plus 2 is 6. Right. So if we if we are taking uh, this trip and this trip takes six hours, that's what how that works. Right. So again, let's let's try another one. So if T was one. So if the first first part of the trip was one hour, then the second part of the trip would be six minus one or five hours. So that's why we have to set up the equation like that. Now, I know it's a little I meant to say it's a little, little, little more confusing than than the previous problem we had. Uh, but it's it's still logically sound and just one of those things that. Um, you, you might not think about unless, or, or rather, until you see it. So 6 minus t, right? So I went back to blue. Okay, so so now, now my trip was, uh, the first part of the trip was 45t, plus the second part of the trip, which was 54, 6 minus t, okay? And that is equal to 303 miles. Okay, so again, the the entire the entire trip, the uh, the entire distance of the trip was 303 miles. We need to figure out how long the first part took, and how long the second part took. Well, in order to do that, we need to solve for t. Now, t represents the first part of the trip, right? That was what we have in blue up here. All right. So let's solve for t here. We end up with a 45t. Uh, plus uh, 54 times 6, it's 330. Yeah, 3, 3, 3, 6 times 5 is 300. 6 times 4, 24, sorry, 324. 324 minus 54 T, and that's equal to 303. Okay, so uh, then we're going to combine like terms here and it uh, looks like we're going to subtract the 324 from both sides, and we're going to combine like terms on the left side. So 45t minus 54t is going to be a negative 9t, so negative 9t. We're also subtracting 324 from both sides, minus 324. So 324 minus that is uh, negative 21. Uh, yeah, negative 21. So let's just go ahead and just write negative 21 there. negative 21 and then uh, at this point looking here we need to divide both sides by negative 9 and if we divide both sides by negative 9 we end up with a positive t is equal to 21 over 9 a positive 21 over 9 right because I divide both sides by a negative number so this is my first part of the trip my first part of the trip being um, 21 over 9, or actually, it actually, it actually um, reduces to 7, three, yeah, 7 over 3. So the first part of the trip, and let's just put this on the next page. Okay, so the first part uh, took 7 thirds of an hour, or hours rather, let's just put HR actually, 7 thirds hour or that would be what, two hours and uh, 20 minutes? Yeah, two hours, 20 minutes, so two hours 
and 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. And the second part of the trip right, uh, would be, well, the first part is 2 hours and 20 minutes. Then the, the, um, the second part would be 3 hours and 40 minutes. Right. So, because you know, we we add both these up, two hours and twenty minutes plus three hours and forty minutes, that does indeed equal to six hours. And let me see. Okay, so they actually put it in fractions, and I'll go and put that in. I'll, I'll snip this and put it in fractions. I guess I went a little too far there. That just reiterates what what I, what I found. Okay, so the average we we're pretty sure we talked about average in here before, um, but now we get to uh, do it with a word problem. Yes, as as discussed previously. So as discussed previously, the average or the mean of a set of numbers can be found by adding the numbers and then dividing the sum by the quantity of numbers in the set. In this section, we use the concept of average to find unknown numbers. So example seven reads, suppose that you have a score of 85, 92, 82, and 88 on four exams in your English class. What score will you need on the fifth exam to have an average of a 90? So I have to do this all the time, especially come, uh, come, come finals time, uh, because <clears throat> uh, I get many students that are like, hey, what do I need to, in order to pass? Right? So what we need to do is, so we see one, two, we see four scores. Here, 85, 92, 82, and 88. We see four scores. And apparently there's a fifth exam, and we need to average a 90. Or we want to average a 90 in the class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 85 plus 92 plus, uh, plus 82 plus 88 plus some unknown. Okay, and of course I'm going to use unknown as simply an X. All right, and I'm going to divide all of that by 5, because if you recall, that's what the average is, right? That's equal to 90. That's equal to the number or the average that I want to have. I want to have a 90. So I need to figure out um, what x is. So I need to apparently I need I need to isolate the variable and I'll figure it out. So before I do that, I need to combine the like terms in the numerator there. So the numerator or the combine like terms there. Oops, that's not my calculator app. That's not it either. My finger's just tapping everything. So we've got 85 plus 92 plus 82 plus 88 is 347. So we end up with a 347 plus x all over 5, and that's equal to a 90. Okay, so we need to solve for x. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5. So we're going to say times 5 times 5. Well, this 5 and this 5 cancel. So we end up with a 347 plus x is equal to 450. And then we're just going to subtract 347 from both sides. And this is not, this is not good um, for uh, this particular, oh, I'm the student, huh? Suppose that you have a score. This is not good for me. I don't think I'm going to be making a 90 in this course, All right? Because if I subtract uh, 347 from both sides, I end up with X is equal to 103. So I'm going to need to make a 103 on the, last exam in order to average uh, in order to have a 90 as an average and again in college 90 is an a so I mean, you're gonna need some extra credit in order to get an a in this course um i guess so uh maybe may, maybe maybe uh, you know an, an 89 point you know 89.3 might get a little bit of a bump from from your professor it'll get a bump from me some of so, some some professors are just like nope I don't know. And then lastly, we're going to talk about, I think this is lastly, um, we're going to talk about the application calculating the cost. Okay. So we, I don't think we have a formula for this. We're just going to have to use the, you know, the yield common sense or something we talked about before. So a jeweler paid $350 for a ring. Okay. So he wants th to price the ring for sale so that he can give a 30% discount on the marked selling price and still make a profit of 20% on his ring. What should the what should be the marked selling price of the ring? 
Okay, so this is, um, I won't say confusing, but there, there's, there's a couple of steps involved here. Okay, so we need to we need we need to have we need to set up a relationship here, and the relationship and relationship being you know a a, a mathematical formula that we can kind of you know plug and chug in. Okay, so we know that uh, in order to begin this, uh, just just in setting up a, a common sense mathematical equation, we know that we're going to have some sort of selling price, okay? And that's going to be minus the cost of whatever whatever I paid for that ring. So in this jeweler, in this particular case, this jeweler paid $350. And that's going to be equal to um, the the profit, so P, okay? So what I, what I sell it for minus the cost is equal to the profit. So if I, so if I sell this ring for $1,000, it cost me $350, then I profited $650. That makes sense, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let X be the selling price. Okay, so we're gonna let X be the selling price. Okay, I don't know if that helps at all, but. Um, so we're going to say the actual selling price is, is going to end up being um, it's going to be end up being x minus uh, 0 0.3x 0 0.3x. So that's going to be the the actual selling price. Okay. So uh, actual selling price. And and of course the cost is is, is equal to to 350, right? So the cost C is equal to 350. Okay. So notice how and actually let's do this. Let's say that this is equal to. And you know what? Let's let's change this up. Let's keep everything in line here. So the selling cost is going to be is going to be the the cost or. or um, X is going to be the selling price, and then minus the 30% off that I'm going to be selling it for, right, is like so. Okay, so if I were to set up this equation, I know that I want to make a profit of 20%. Okay, so so keep that in mind as as, as I fill in this blank. So I have S minus C is equal to P. So my S is as um, X minus 0 0.3. So X minus 0.3x. This is my selling cost. Okay, I'm going to put that in parentheses just for, for, I don't know, I like parentheses. <laughs> minus 350. Okay, because that's the cost. And again, I'm just following this s minus c. And then my profit is going to end up being, I want to make a 20% profit on my, uh, on my initial investment of $350. Okay, and we solve this, we need to man, I do not write straight. Okay, so let's solve this. We end up with x minus zero point three x minus three fifty is equal to um, twenty percent of three fifty is seventy. And then x minus 0 0.3 is, is x is, is uh, 0 0.7x. And if we add 350 to both sides, we end up with a 420. Right? And then um, divide both sides by 0 0.7. So we end up with an x is equal to 600. Okay. So I need to I need to sell this price. All right, I'm sorry, I need to I need to sell this ring. For if I'm the jeweler, I need to sell this ring for six hundred dollars um, in order to, you know, in order to make it look like somebody's getting thirty percent off, and I'm, while I'm also getting a twenty percent um, uh, profit off of it. So, well, that's that. Um, pretty sure that was the end. Yeah, that's the end. So that does conclude today's lecture on two point four.